All right, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Keith Wimes is the Chief Marketing Officer for Elemental Technologies, a subsidiary of Amazon Web Services, the 10 billion and plus uh, cloud infrastructure division of Amazon.com. The team is transforming the media landscape with video software solutions accessible globally in the cloud. He has 25 years of experience in technology businesses in various marketing functions, but also has an engineering degree and a master's in finance. In this talk, he's going to discuss why video compression exists, how it works, and how it's applied to enable all types of entertainment collaboration and information sharing applications. So all of you on Netflix, you should listen to what he's doing and how that's going to affect your lives directly. Thank you, Keith. Great, thanks. Good morning. Oh, a clap, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I want to I want to figure out is everyone a senior or are you all ages? So hold your hand up if you're a senior. Okay, put your hand down, junior. Sophomore? Whoa. Wow, the sophomores are eager. Freshmen? Oh wow. What's up with the juniors? They're testing. Oh. <laughs> ACT? Uh, S -S what is it? Oh. Oh, uh, that's what my daughter was doing. My daughter is a junior as well, so she was doing that. Um, so this, the title of my presentation, does it sound pretty boring? All right. <laughs> it won't be. Uh, well, maybe it will be. Um, so just, just by background, so I, I work for uh, Elemental Technologies. We were a software startup that was founded in 2006 uh, here in Portland, right here in Portland. So it started with three... Three guys, they went out, they had an idea, um, ended up building a video software company, so doing video compression. And over the course of time, we built that business up. Uh, the three employees turned into around 20 when I joined in 2010. Uh, by the time we sold to Amazon a little over a year and a half ago, uh, we were about 275 employees, and now we're about, our division is about 425 employees, and we continue to grow. So it's a, it's a Portland-based company that's an interesting one, very high-tech, very focused on uh, software. And really what we do is we help uh, companies that typically deliver video in the past to just a TV set. Uh, we help them deliver it to all types of devices. So everyone here today is familiar with video applications and you use it on your, on your smartphones and on your tablets uh, and on your gaming devices and gaming consoles. Um, and we were really part of helping the industry do that. So our, our customers are companies like ESPN, uh, companies like Netflix use us as well, Amazon, uh, as our parent, we, were, um, we supply into uh, some of their online video uh, delivery. And then we sell to sports leagues and movie studios, um, companies like Warner Brothers, um, uh, companies like ABC, uh, Comcast, uh, folks like that, DirecTV, if you're familiar with cable providers. Um, so what I want to do today is, is not necessarily talk purely about math. I, I want you to see an application of math. So uh, a lot of you, I think, are doing computer science classes. Maybe you're taking Java programming, or uh, I'm sure there are gaming, uh, gaming classes that are done here today. All of those tend to use some form of, of video compression in, in, in the course of time, and we use a lot of programming to do that. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about just the application of the technology and try to get you thinking about uh, a lot of what you tend to do in school and in college um, is, is theory. So you're learning the, the, the basic theory and great teachers then talk about the applications of that. And hopefully you start to do some work on your own um, in terms of the application. Some of you have probably developed some apps um, and things like that. Uh, but I want to talk about just video compression in general. Uh, because video compression has really been a key enabler along with the devices of allowing video to get anywhere so that you can use it in these little slices of time that you, that you use to watch video. So you probably do it on the bus and you'll do it when you're waiting at a doctor's office or you'll do it you know, uh, when you're trying to avoid your homework. Um, so, or you may use, it, you use video to do your homework. So that's the first thing I wanted to start with is if you can just think about video um, and the different applications of video. And I want you guys to share with me, uh, we're gonna fill out a blank slate here. So if you can just call out, if you would, an application of video that you can think of from your, from your da daily life. YouTube. YouTube. What do you do on YouTube? Watch videos. Why? 
Why else? Entertainment is one. They also what? Education, right, okay. Any others? That's it? <laughs> That's all you guys got, two? <laughs> Education and entertainment, what else? Yep. Music, so music videos and tying those together. What else? Opera. That is absolutely right. And that's because the Met, right? Are you familiar with this? So the Metropolitan Opera live streams opera all over the world. How did you know that? I didn't at all. You just made that up? Yeah. Wow. We actually uh, did the world's first 4K streaming live from the Vienna Opera in Austria. Who would have thought, right? But there are people that are really into opera, but there's only like 10 places in the world where opera is truly great. And so if you can live stream it, you can get it to a million people instead of the thousand that can be in that audience. As long as it's high enough quality. And the importance of the audio, obviously, in opera is another big one. That's so funny that it was sarcastic, but it was real. <laughs> what else? Communications in what way? Snapchat. What else? FaceTime. Any others? Skype. A lot of video, right? You guys just take it as for granted. It's like, oh, there's a face there. It's talking. What's another? What's that? We'll, well, okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit, right? So he said Skype compression is terrible, and that's not just because it's owned by Microsoft, right? Okay. Actually, they're a customer. I shouldn't say that, too. Um, any others that you can think of? There are more. Gaming. Gaming. Who, who games here? Raise your hand. Pretty good percentage. Not too bad. If it gets to 100, then I get worried. You're still gaming, or you have a question? Okay, another app? Sports, yep. So any type of, really any sport, right? Because that is a, a form of content that people like to watch live uh, in general, um, or they like to watch just the best plays, so clips of it. Uh, any others that you can think of? Let's see if we got them, we'll see if we got them all. I think I put up nine that just came top of mind. Any others before we check the score? The news, that's another good one. Animation. Interesting. For what? Computer animation or movies or anything, entertainment. It can be educational. It can be all of those things, right? Sometimes it's semi news. Any others? You guys did pretty well. I don't know if. So you, no one thought of theater, which is interesting. So going to the theater, somebody did say movies and entertainment, but anyone, anyone been to a theater in the last year? Pretty much everyone? Okay. Theaters use video compression, right? Uh, home, nobody said to watch my cable, uh, cable channel. Cause does anyone do that here? Anyone watch cable other than sports? Other than sports. Couple, right? But most of you are using streaming uh, technologies and that's why we've done pretty well. Nobody said security. So security uses video compression, and that might be at a personal level. Um, what's that? It could, I couldn't hear you. The CIA does not have that anyway. The CIA does that. Yeah, there's lots of government applications, we call them, not to be discussed. Uh, education, so somebody said YouTube for education. Say it again. <laughs> Gaming. Uh, this is more for the for the older folks, but this conference or this set of sessions is being, I think it's just being captured on the hard drive here, or is it network? Three cameras and a, a computer recorder. Okay, so it's all being recorded, but it could be live streamed so that all of the schools in Beaverton or all the schools in Oregon or all the schools in the U.S. could be seeing this, although I wouldn't recommend it because it would be a little boring for them remotely. It's, a, it's better in person, right? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, somebody said Snapchat, so we got that. 
or different social applications. FaceTime was covered. Nobody said medical, but medical is actually used for training instead of having the students, the medical students that are um, trying to learn about different things right there in the room, which can only be limited. Sometimes they'll have almost like a fishbowl above the operating room where you can be in, the gl in glass, almost like, almost like in an aquarium, looking at somebody getting operated on. You could, you could actually capture that in video and live stream it, or you could capture it and then play it back later. So it's used for that. Uh, type of purposes, and there are a million other applications. So uh, why do you actually compress video? Does anyone know? To make it smaller, right? <laughs> it's very fundamental to it. The reason is, is to make it smaller, right? So um, this is a snapshot of um, the Australian Open. Anyone play tennis? Did anyone watch it streaming? on ES Was it ESPN? Nobody watched it? Okay. <laughs> Tennis is like, okay, too, too specific. Uh, but the fact that it is specific, now, so tennis is a pretty popular sport, um, but for those more esoteric events like uh, rugby, well, rugby is popular in lots of countries, but in other countries it's not so popular, so it's hard to see it, so you can live stream it. And if you don't compress the vid video, it's actually two to three gigabits per second if you're trying to stream that. That's actually impossible. Um, anyone know what their bandwidth is? to a typical home connection, roughly? 20, 20 megabits, 50 sometimes, 100 if you're, if you're lucky or more. Uh, in general, it's around 10 or less. And in many countries, it's, you know, in Korea, it can be a, up to a gig. Um, in other countries, it can be very little. Uh, there could be no connection, obviously. Um, and so to get the video to the destination, you need to compress it, otherwise it, it won't get there. Just the bandwidth of the video. Video is very information intensive. And so if you didn't compress it, um, you know, for a sporting event, literally the only people that would be able to see the video is the people in the, in the production facility, and that would, that would suck. That's, that's a very small group of people, right? Um, they want to get it to 100 million people, not 10. And so video would be kind of stuck. It would be stuck at the game. It would be stuck in the production facility. They do do somewhat uncompressed content to the production facility. Um, and they do that to maintain the level of quality until they start to insert different, you know, different, uh, different post-production events. So they'll do those cool um, effects of video. They'll overlay the graphics of the, the score you know, different stats. Um, they will switch it to commercials, which is exciting. Um, but they, they generally do that uncompressed and then they compress it for final delivery. So all networks have constraints. Um, if you're looking at these, what are the different, what, what is the most common network type of network that you utilize for, for video? Wi-Fi? What else? A data network? So over ethernet, so you're actually, physically connected. Is it better to be doing live, anyone do live gaming or watch Twitch? Yeah? Do you do that over your Wi-Fi? You do? Or do you, do you sometimes do it over a connection? Yeah, so Ethernet's better, but the wireless is more convenient, so you kind of make that trade-off. Do you ever get frustrated when you're on Wi-Fi at the other side of your house from your router? Yeah, there's a way to solve that with different types of routing technologies. Um, satellite, so a lot of video actually comes down from satellite. Um, that can be either live streamed events or cable channels. So if you have DirecTV or Comcast, generally that, that did come off a of satellite at some point because it originated at a specific channel's location where they were doing the production and they put it up to the satellite and then the broadcast provider um, brought it to you. So uh, I want to talk about some keys to compression. And this is actually, emojis are an example of compression. In, in uh, I think they're a really good example of compression. So you guys know what the, what the emoji on the right stands for, right? When you see it, you're basically doing decompression. You're seeing that and you're translating it into what you know that that means. And that is how video compression works. Instead of, instead of sending this string of, what you just said made me laugh so hard I'm crying, which would be tough on the thumbs and, and really difficult to do, you send an emoji. And that's an example, actually, 
of, of compression. You're, you're taking a long string, a, a long piece of information, um, and putting it into something that is really easy with one push. You're sending it, and the person is receiving it, and they're essentially decoding that message. You know, if, if you'd sent that emoji to me 25 years ago, I, I would have no idea what, what it meant at the time. I do know now, kind of. Um, but 25 years ago, roughly, or more, when I was in high school, I guess 30 years, I don't know. Uh, I, I gotta do the math. Gosh, that's weird when you had that feeling being out of high school for a long time. But when I was in high school, if I got that, I don't, it wouldn't mean anything to me. Like, if, they, if there was a sticker that was placed on my locker and I saw that, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it would just be like, what the heck is that, right? So, but now you have a syntax for being able to essentially decode that. It's a symbol and it represents all those words. And video is the same way. So, uh, the art of video compression is really about throwing out the information that doesn't matter. Okay, so I'll talk about a few of these things. So one thing is the, the eye and the human perception engine, I'll call it, um, really notices the brightness, the luma of video much more than the chroma or the color, right? And the easiest way to explain this is when you're watching a video, let's just say you're watching a movie, you don't really know, unless you've been at the set, at the location, and have per perfect memory, you don't know what color that area is, right? If you're watching a video of someone on a street in San Francisco with lots of you know, beautiful colored houses in the background, you have no idea what color those are. They could be all gray, and you'd view that scene just as well. You'd, you'd be happy with it, but you would notice if the luma, if the brightness was all washed out because you just have all these areas that have no detail at all. Does that make sense? So in general, with video compression, you don't send as much chroma information, not as much color detail. You don't have all the, you know, if there were an infinite, infinite number of colors in the rainbow, you wouldn't send them all. You'd only send the eight that really matter. Um, but you do send more information in terms of, of the brightness. The other area um, is spatial redundancy. So when you, when you watch a video, as we all know from the picture books that we did in uh, the flip books in elementary school, what do you, you, you're, you're kind of sending information that changes over time. And in general, around images, you're sending a series of stills, right? That's what video is. It's a still and then another one and another one, especially uncompressed video. And so a lot of that um, means that there's redundancy. So there, there could be a sky. A blue sky is a blue sky is a blue sky. Now you add clouds, it adds complexity. But generally, in video compression, you're looking for redundancy. So you're looking for the things, you know, even in a detailed picture, you're looking for areas where um, everything looks the same. So you can see in the top left of the, of the, um, the right side of this, you can see that it all pretty much looks the same, and so you can send all that information as, as one block, as an example. So you try to group those together and say all these pixels are essentially the same. They all have the same uh, type of value, and so you send that for that, that group. And you can see that happening here. So these are actually two types of compression. Uh, the one on the left is essentially more fine-grained and more detailed, and then the one on the right allows for the area that you're talking about, you're saying these are all the same or roughly the same to be a little bit bigger, and therefore you can send less information to get the same amount of detail uh, out the other side. Any questions at this point? What other, what other, um, actually I'm just gonna jump to the conclusion. Uh, the, other, the other area is what's called temporal, so over time. And when you're, when you're sending a video, if you're doing on an image, you're kind of reducing the, you're telling where everything is the same. The other thing that you're doing with video is you're looking at what changes over the course of time. And so with, with video that like this, where the background viewer had a camera out where you are, my background isn't changing very much. The slide's changing, you know, every couple minutes or so. Um, but in general, the only thing that's changing is, is my mouth area or if I walk. And so that's the temporal change. So on one second I was here, 
the next few seconds I'm over here, that's the change that's taking place. And if you just think about a ball going across a screen over time, you know, for a, for a second, there might be 50 or 60 slices per second. Um, you're just noting the change and sending that information. So there will be something called an anchor frame that has all the detail. And then on the next, the next slide, you only send the bit of information that you need to know that the ball has moved from this pixel location to the next one. And so in that way, you don't have to send all the information. And so this is a little hard to see on this projector, but I think you can see it. Essentially, what video compression is, is over time, you're adding more and more algorithms to send less and less information. And so one of the reasons why you can get video now on devices is not just because the devices have a screen or because they can decode it or because the bandwidth is available to receive it, but because the actual video, video compression, the, the codec that's used, is better than it was 10 years ago, okay? So on the top screen, you can see an example of a really advanced codec. This is actually a codec that isn't generally available yet, like none of your, none of your phones generally do this uh, form of compression. And then down below is the typical video that you would use for Netflix or for any type of um, streaming that you would use today. And you can see up top, the level of detail is better. And down below, it's kind of washed out, so you get the, the Skype effect. Um, as it were, and so, but these are the same bit rate, so you're able to send, maybe this is a two megabit stream now, so it can stay under your 10 megabit limit that you have, but you can send better quality, and that's why, you know, back 10 years ago, if you're watching video on a PC, it was really, it was really bad, um, and now you're watching it, and it feels, it doesn't feel perfect to most people, uh, but in general, it's, it's very much good enough, and so that's why video has spread, um, so much in the last uh, five years or so. So that's my talk. What questions do you guys have? Okay, yeah. Um, is that kind of compression really like intensive on the CPU? Because you have to find all these changes in the video instead of just sending it blatantly forward to the. Yes, so uh, his, well, everyone heard his question. <laughs> uh, I'm so used to repeating questions. The answer is yes, and it's the key reason why we did so well as a company. So our company fundamentally was born based on the, we were the first company in the world to figure out how to do video compression on GPUs uh, instead of CPUs. And so we end up using both, um, but we were able to figure out when you're doing video compression and you're doing these streaming applications, you're typically taking one file or one stream in and making many different renditions of it, many different versions with different bit rates and different resolutions. And that was impossible, pretty impossible at, at the time with pure CPU solutions. And so we figured out how to use a graphics processor that was used for gaming and for different types of rendering applications and figured out how to do real-time compression using NVIDIA, uh, which is a, a manufacturer. So anyone that's a gamer probably uses a, a big NVIDIA card to accelerate their gaming. Um, and we figured out how to do video compression on it. So that's a really good question. Any others? Uh, could you tell us what Elemental Technologies does versus Amazon, like you kind of listed both, but maybe not what one does versus the other. Yeah, so here's the hierarchy of it. So Amazon is the parent. Amazon does about 100 billion a year in revenue. Um, they have a division that is a cloud infrastructure division that does around 10 billion in revenue. And then we do um, pure video software at around 100 million in revenue. So it's kind of orders of magnitude uh, smaller. And what we do is we actually act as a supplier to Amazon Video. So if you watch uh, Amazon Video or Amazon Channels, which is their live offering, it'll utilize our technology to essentially prepare the video and help deliver, deliver the video so that it gets to the subscriber. Any others? Yep. Yeah. When did I realize? Oh, um, so, so the question was, when did I realize I wanted to go in this field? And 
the answer is I, I spent about 10 years just doing general technology um, work and then uh, I was recruited to a company that was doing video uh, where they were helping companies, uh, telephone companies deliver video over their phone lines. Um, and that was actually the first time that I saw really pristine uh, high definition video. It was when I was being recruited and I went there and I saw a demonstration of that technology and I'd never seen video look that good and it was going over phone, phone wires, which to me was like just mind blowing and I was like, I, I need to be at that company. So it was kind of that just reaction of, video is kind of cool to, from a technology perspective, you can see the results of it um, and me seeing that result of what they were showing me convinced me um, to accept that role. So it was a very specific point in time. Anything else? Okay, thank you.